Hey guys, welcome to VR Essentials. We have some emergency, emergency breaking VR news here with the Quest Pro being discontinued. I was literally asleep. It's about six o'clock in the morning. I put my alarm on. I had to wake up. I had to do this video for you guys. What does it mean? What is going on? It's just absolutely, absolutely crazy. Let's dive into the article and get the lowdown. Now guys, originally the Quest Pro sold by Meta was worth a staggering $1,500 However, after the VR, uh, sorry, the HTC Vive XR Elite came out, it turned out to be a really, really amazing VR headset being sold for much less than that. And the response by Meta back then when this headset came out was that they had to lower the price in order to compete with it. That's really why they had to lower it because no one was really buying it at 1500. So in March of this year, they brought it down to a thousand, less than a thousand US dollars, which left a lot of other people completely gobsmacked because they basically could have bought it for $600 less, you know, $500 whatever dollars less. So, you know, the community wasn't very happy about this. And also, of course, other things occurred, but let's go back into the actual. So this article is written, by the way, by XR Daily News. It literally just came out not too long ago, just a few hours whilst I was actually sleeping. Meta wants to halt the production of the Quest Pro headset once the remaining components are depleted, which basically means that they will not be renewing any parts from the manufacturers to sell more Quest Pros. The information reliable, reliable excuse me, news outlet has recently informed us that Meta is no longer ordering new components for the Meta Quest Pro. In other words, Meta intends to discontinue the production of the headset after its release. Uh, let me just zoom in again. Okay, there we go. You can see better. MetaQuest Pro was launched as a premium VR AR headset in October last year. It was announced at MetaConnect and advertised as a tool for productivity and enthusiasts wanting to experience the future. However, the hype for the headset fell short after its release, uh, including the reviews were critical of the pass-through quality and the lack of a depth sensor which is a central component in augmented reality. So when you're trying to do mixed reality, in fact, not just augmented reality, and you want to uh, be able to manipulate and, and really feel the objects, the digital objects within the real world, it's very important to have that depth sensor. And also apparently according to reviews, the mixed reality itself, it, it, was, it was jittery, it wasn't perfect. It just didn't look right for a headset of that price and also the battery there were some issues with it and the weight it's not properly even though they have the battery at the back it actually felt uncomfortable for quite a lot of people even though some people i have to say said that they really liked the quest pro in fact if you have a quest pro let us know in the comments below what were the pros for you what were the cons what do you wish would have been on it instead of what was on it or what did you really love about it? What do you love about it? And also, of course, the controllers were very new. The fact that, um, you know, it had cameras with it and no rings and everything. That was very, very innovative kind of technology. So does this mean that they are planning to release a new Quest Pro version? So the Quest 3 Pro, basically, if they're not going to be releasing any more or making more Quest Pro, the original Quest Pro, that is, in order to provide two different headsets, which would justify the original price of the quest 3 which was supposed to be more than 900 us dollars as what we had speculated before the announcement of the actual quest 3 which is now as we know around 500 us dollars for the cheapest alternative let's go back into the actual article and see the lowdown here uh, so let's not forget about the meta cartoony avatars which also received criticism one of the main advertised features collaboration in workrooms was not a pleasant experience due to the avatars lacking depth and appearance, non-human despite having eye and face tracking. Even though the avatars, I believe now that the proportions have been looked at after they had released uh, calls, avatar calls on Instagram and Facebook and Messenger, I believe, which will be released probably in parties as well, I would say. Additionally, the lack of eye tracking usability uh, as very few apps and games currently utilize it. Now, this is actually quite important because of course, the Vision Pro by Apple is all about spatial computing, and this is something that Meta has not capitalized on 
and then unfortunately is their downfall they weren't able to take that and to make it their own and to own it basically instead they just use it as a feature as the hp reverb g2 um pro version excuse me i forgot the actual name of that g2 the enterprise version also had all these various different sensors on it were actually absolutely amazing but they didn't capitalize it on that either so quest meta did the same mistake as well which is unfortunate because it could have been theirs but instead Apple are owning the spatial computing industry or space, if you wish, with all those other sensors, which the MetaQuest Pro already has, of course. So let's go back here to the article and read a little more. Uh, further contributors to the headsets uh, not meeting expectations, especially considering its high price tag of 1500 So that's right. So basically, you know, as I mentioned, Meta could have really sold the spatial computing space before Apple came into it and, you know, really tell developers to use it as much as possible to develop the games or to develop the apps or to even internally in the software itself to be able to use the eyes and create some experiences where it would really enable them to own that space which they lacked to do so they didn't do it so that's what i'm basically trying to say all right so it seems that meta anticipates poor sales for the quest pro following the release of the more affordable Quest 3, which boasts superior features except for eye face tracking and a mini LED backlight. While the lack of eye tracking uh, in the Quest 3 is indeed significant loss, most users don't consider face tracking and mini LED backlight essential. Meta is well aware of this and with MetaQuest 3's inclusion of a depth sensor, two RGB cameras instead of one, and a more capable processor and a higher resolution display, the Quest Pro may seem like a redundant choice. Well, basically what they're doing is that they're saying, right, well, in the Quest 3, we're not going to have facial and eye tracking, but remember that Pico are very synonymous with this. They have the Nimo Pico and then they have the Pico Enterprise. So it's very possible that Meta will employ the same kind of strategy where you will have a Meta Quest 3 Pro that will have those sensors within it, or perhaps they will may maybe be an accessory which will enable you to have an add-on to create these kind of things. Who knows? We don't really know. We're very speculative, speculative here, but we do know that the Quest 3 itself, the simple standard one, will indeed not have those kind of features. All right, let's go back into the article. All this means that the Quest Pro will be discontinued, discontinued excuse me, uh, in production, but certainly not in support. It will most likely years before Quest Pro will lose its update support. So if you are a happy owner of this headset, you can sleep well. So guys, basically this means that, well, for those who own the headset, well, you'll still be able to use it for the games and all these kind of things. But it is possible that perhaps if the Quest 3 is much more, let's say, um, you know, in terms of performance, in terms of GPU, in terms of all these kind of different things that developers may not be able to update the games as much for the Quest Pro as they're not able to at the moment for the Quest 1, for example. Even though you can still run games on the Quest 1 or the Oculus Go, updates are not being rolled out onto that specific headset. So, you know, it might be that the Quest Pro will be available for doing those updates maybe for an extra year or two, but for sure, you know, at some point, they will definitely stop you know, the ability for developers to do those updates on the Quest Pro. So guys, if you're a Quest Pro owner, how does this make you feel? What does this news mean to you? Leave some comments below. Let us know your thoughts. Does this mean that you guys who don't own a Quest Pro now want to go and buy a Quest Pro before it's been discontinued and before you can't get one? As undoubtedly, it's the first real mixed reality headset that is, you know, consumer enterprise level by Meta. So if you bought one potentially maybe 10 to 20 years from now, if you don't unbox it, the value of that headset what do you think? Do you think it could go 10x, 20x? So you spend, let's say, $1,000 today. Do you think it could be worth potentially $10,000 or $50,000 10 to 15 years from now? Leave a comment below. Let's spark this conversation as to what this news means to you. Guys, hit the notification bell so you get the latest emergency breaking VR news fastest in the industry at the moment on YouTube from us. And also hit the likes if this kind of video, you want me to do more of them in the future. Guys, until next time, Friday, join us for the live AMA with this guy, by the way. Let me just go to our YouTube channel very quickly. We're gonna be meeting with Valem, a very, very cool developer, guys. Let me just go to his YouTube channel very quickly. Valem, there we go, Valem VR. We are meeting this guy on Friday. Let me just type it again, sorry. 
about that. There we go. So we're meeting Velem on Friday for a live party chat AMA. He's an absolutely amazing guy, has done tons of different videos, helped tens of thousands of people to learn how to code in VR, guys. you got to meet him. He's got a lot to talk, a lot to say, a lot to share. And he's just an absolutely amazing, amazing guy. So guys, do be sure to come back on Friday for this live AMA. And also Pimax will be sending me one of the crystal Pimax VR headsets to try out and to review on the channel. So make sure to hit the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of my personal review compared to the DP VR, the HP Reverb G2, and also this guy, the Pico 4, will be putting it side by side comparison. Guys, see you later. Bye for now.